you know, one of the things building on that theme of our employees is, you know, it's not just those who are full-time employees. We yeah. also have non-employees, contractors, and telecommuters who are employees but don't come into our locations. Could you address the question about, you know, who is this requirement applicable to non-employees and contractors and also telecommuters? Yeah. So I would say it's applicable to everyone. Um, whether you're in the U.S. as a contractor, as an employee, or Puerto Rico, it, it's applicable to everyone. Um, we um, are holding our contractors to the same standards. Um, we're working with our various suppliers um, to make sure that they uh, hold our contractors to compliance with it and can attest to us that they are in compliance with it. With respect to telecommuters, it gets back to a little bit about what we were talking about up front. We do have some people that work from home um, and are remote because for them to be able to come into the office to do anything, whether it be training, get a com new computer, you name it, um, and also potentially take on new roles and get promoted and get to do different things and move around the company, everyone is included in the mandate. So whether you're working from home, whether you're a contractor, or whether you're a full-time employee um, in the U.S. in Puerto Rico. And I, I think that is so important to clarify because that is a question that's come up. Yep. And, and while in the short term, I think people might think, oh, but I'm not coming in. Why does this matter? But you don't want to be the employee who can never engage again with large mass of your team members, who cannot be part of training programs in office, who can't someday, right, go back to business travel and, and leadership conferences and events, right? So, so I do think it's important that everybody understand that this is applicable to everyone um, in the company and that we're still moving forward.